Everyone always asks where is ray tracing, but no one asks how is ray tracing. Well let me tell you, ray tracing is a pain. In my last video I made a ray tracer for my voxel world. Uh, actually it's patch tracing. No it's ray marching. Okay nerds, thanks for the input, but I will keep calling it ray tracing because it sounds cooler. Anyway, in this video I'll actually add ray tracing of meshes, so I can render once again my high quality good looking models. But before that I wanted to add some trees, cause I miss seeing trees in my world. So I added trees with a texture that moves. Wow, that is beautiful. Okay, so for the meshes, the basic idea is for the rays to check if they hit the triangle of the mesh. If I send my mesh data to my ray tracer and I do that, I get... Um... What is that? It's super laggy and broken. Turns out I wasn't sending the data correctly to the ray tracer, so that's kind of my fault. Whoops! After fixing this, I can see my meshes in my ray tracer, so thanks for watching everyone, hopefully you enjoyed. Okay, no, there are still many problems with this. First of all, it is very, very laggy. Well, of course, because every ray is checking for an intersection with every triangle. That's really bad. A popular way to optimize it is by using BVH, which stands for... <clears throat> oh, Bacon Veggie Hamburger. Oh, wait, no. Bounding Volume Hierarchy. That's basically a nerd way to say a tree of nodes. Imagine if you have a mesh with 1 million triangles. If you shoot a ray and check for intersection with 1 million triangles, it's gonna take a while. Now imagine you split the mesh into two boxes of 500k triangles each. Now the ray can check for intersections with two boxes to know which one it hit, and then 500k triangles to check inside that box. Now imagine you keep splitting the mesh into smaller and smaller boxes, until each one only has a few triangles. The ray might only need to check intersection with around 30 boxes and then 1 to 5 triangles. Instead of 1 million triangles, that is much better. I started implementing that and I got it almost working pretty fast but it took a while for it to actually work perfectly. The hardest part was building all the tree of nodes and their triangles especially when a triangle went over multiple nodes. I think I actually coded that wrong because I don't think that's supposed to happen with traditional BVH, but it works, so I'll keep it like that. So now I can use my ray tracer to render the nodes and they look pretty cool. Another problem is that my ray only checks the first thing hit with the order of the nodes, so sometimes it renders the back in front of the front faces. That is not good but at least the performances are decent. I mean, they're not amazing, but I can render a few spheres of 250 triangles each, or one big sphere of around 10,000 triangles. It lags a little bit with that though. I guess it can still be optimized a lot. Anyway, I fixed the wrong faces being rendered and added the textures by using the mesh UV property. I also tried adding shadows, but it wasn't that good. I think I would need to get the normals from the meshes, which I didn't do, and that's why it doesn't look that good. Anyway, after that, I tried adding ray accumulation with random redirection, which should increase the light and shadow quality. Basically, you add the results of multiple frames together and accumulate light to get better results. If you never reset it, it just causes blur, but if you reset it when the camera moves, and only accumulate when the camera doesn't move, you get a smoother result. The problem in my case is that I want to have a day and night cycle with a moving sun so the shadows can't accumulate since they are always moving. So I decided to remove the accumulation. The next thing I decided to do was to make the meshes move and animate because right now they are static. I tried adding it but I just ended up with a bunch of lag and uh, creatures. Even after fixing the lag the meshes were still looking a little weird. That's partially because I messed up my code to calculate the animation's frames, but also because with the animations, the meshes don't fit as well into their bacon veggie burger from earlier. Uh, I mean, bounding volume hierarchy. 
When the triangles move out of their nodes because of the animations, they aren't rendered anymore. That's not good. So I had to rebuild all of the nodes for every frame of the animation. That took a lot of work and for some reason, the piggies started getting a little bit sassy with me. But I ended up getting it to work. Except at some angles. It literally works perfectly from every angle, except a few. That makes no sense at all. Another problem was that if I spawned two meshes, they all took the texture of the last one. Oof. I guess that pig turned into... BACON? <laughs> so I fixed that and then fixed the bug of the meshes at angles. At that point, it was looking pretty good, so I added back gravity and collisions. Everything was great, except that meshes were drawn on top of the voxels always, even when they are behind them. I fixed that pretty easily by getting the distance to the first mesh hit and the first voxel hit and comparing them. Of course, if the mesh is closer than the voxel, it is in front, and if it is further, it's behind. After that, everything was great for meshes, so I'm pretty happy with that. The last thing I wanted to fix was the destruction. I showed in my last video that my destruction was pretty laggy. The first reason for that is that when I changed my world to use a knock tree, I recoded the destruction in a poor way. The second reason is that I have to send a copy of my knock tree in a different format to the ray tracer every time it changes, because my knock tree uses objects and the ray tracer doesn't take that. So I recoded my destruction in a better way and made the copy for the ray tracer update at the same time as the real arc tree, so I don't have to rebuild the whole thing every time and there you go, my destruction is super fast again. I would say even faster than before, which was the initial goal by the way. Okay, you might notice that there's some small holes and bugs going on with it, but I said that it was fast, not that it was good. <laughs> Well, I'm sure it will be fixed eventually. The difficult part is finding out which parts to fill are not in the radius of destruction, since the code doesn't really know what is above and what is under the surface. I also decided to spawn big lakes of water below a certain height level, and it looks good but it's a bit laggy with so many reflections. So now I consider that my retracer is pretty much done. There's some little things to fix, but I think most of it is technically not the ray tracer, but just the world and stuff like that. So how is my ray tracer? Was it a good idea to switch from meshes to this? Uh, honestly, I don't think so. <laughs> I think the meshes were probably better, but if I can find ways to optimize it a bit more, then sure, it will be good. That's it for now, so thanks for watching.